Excellent! What's up guys, here on Paul's Hardware I like to try to spend equal time between water-cooled systems and non-water-cooled systems because I know water cooling is fun and entertaining, but it's not something that everyone is into. So what if you find yourself in this situation? You have built yourself, or are in the process of building yourself, a very nice high-end air-cooled system, maybe featuring the highest-end graphics card, at least on the consumer level currently available, like a GTX 1080. Got it all set up in like a awesome build like this one back here behind me and then you realize you know what I want more I want to try out water cooling but maybe you're a little bit too afraid to connect all the fittings and do leak testing I want to maybe overclock a little bit more or maybe you just want to silence your system and get a little bit cooler well EK may have devised a solution for you by combining their predator series of all-in-one liquid coolers now available in 280 millimeter size by the way with a pre-filled GPU block with quick disconnects that means you can take the quick disconnects and loop the GPU into your CPU loop and get yourself a GPU and CPU cooling solution without having to to like fill any reservoirs or leak tests or you know do the fittings or any of that kind of stuff maybe that takes some of the fun out of it for some of you guys but for others it makes it a lot less worrisome and it also gives you the ability to say get an all-in-one cpu cooler right now and then maybe expand it to a gpu and cpu loop in the future what i have done today is set up an air cooled system which again is right there behind me i'm going to be testing that at stock and also run some overclocks with the air-cooled setup, and that's uh, featuring the GTX 1080 Gaming Z here from MSI, as well as the 5930K. And then we'll pop in the uh, EK Predator solution and see what kind of difference it makes. Here are the specs for the system I've set up. I was originally going to use a Fantex M2 Pro case, but uh, did not have enough vertical space on the radiator mount at the top, so I went with the Corsair 760T instead, which has plenty of room up there. Power supply is the EVGA G2 750 watt, 240 gig HyperX Savage SSD, an MSI X99 Gaming Pro Carbon Motherboard, G-Scale Ripjaws 5 16 gig memory kit at 2666, an Intel Core i7-5930K 6 core CPU, and for the air-cooled setup at least, an Enermax ETS T40B CPU cooler, and then of course the graphics card, the MSI GTX 1080 Gaming Z GPU, and if you're confusing this with the Gaming X, it is a little bit different. It has a fully custom PCB, and they've also added an integrated LED logo on the back of the card itself, on the back plate, which is a pretty cool place to have a logo, actually. Looks pretty nice. Let's take a look at our first set of test results first, though, since for some reason it decided to be 104 degrees here in Diamond Bar, even though it's September. Jeez. Uh, Alright, so first off I wanted to point out that I have removed the top cover for this system, so it does have uh, exhaust on the top, even though we're going with the air-cooled setup right now. So what I've been doing is running uh, Unigen Valley on loop, as well as the Ida64 system stability test. I'm sorry that I'm recording the screen right now, but let's take a look at the results. So air cool, this system has actually been doing really well. Um, hasn't had to spin up the fans too much or anything like that. GPU is actually uh, peaking up to about 2,050 megahertz out of the box. That is up from its uh, out of the box boost clock of 1,911. I have been running the Ida4 system stability test just with the CPU stress going on. It's for almost 20 minutes now, actually over 20 minutes now. Uh, as well as, of course, the Unigen uh, Valley benchmark. So that's doing the GPU, whereas the system stability test is doing the CPU. So with both of those going on, there should be a pretty good amount of heat building up in the system. CPU, however, has only gotten up to about uh, 58 degrees max on the core. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, 59 degrees max as of checking right now, uh, which is very not bad in the least. Then as far as the GPU's temperatures, uh, it actually got up to about 70 degrees Celsius uh, at one point, but after the fans ramped up, it uh, ended up averaging around 60 degrees Celsius, so very nice. As for the CPU, it's running at 3.6 gigahertz on all six cores. Um, that's again just the stock frequency out of the box for a uh, 5930K, and 58 degrees Celsius again was that maximum core temp. So temperatures are definitely not that bad. Let's check out sound though. This is kind of anecdotal, but uh, I do have my shotgun mic set up, and here's a listen. Next up, we have overclock results. So basically I've dialed in a 4.4 gigahertz overclock on the CPU. Um, pretty standard straight up OC in that regard. It is at 1.2 volts, 1.22 volts 
to be more specific. Uh, and running at 4.4 gigahertz on all six CPU cores, giving me uh, CPU temperatures at around 81 degrees C maximum. Uh, although they did level around out around in the mid 70s, which is a little bit better. That is a pretty big jump though. That again went from 58 degrees C uh, with not overclocked all the way up to 81 C. So that might be uh, an area where, where we can see some benefit from going with a liquid cooler. As far as the GPU, uh, I did first establish a faster fan curve. That's usually what I do in overclock. So fan curve in this uh, instance is running at 75 to 80% versus the stock where it was running at about 50%. Um, that's giving us GPU temperatures that are actually a little bit uh, cooler than before, 65 degrees C peak temperature. So definitely some help from that uh, extra bit of fan rotational speed that we have in there. And I'll give you a noise test here in just a moment. Here's overclock settings, uh, plus 25 on the available extra core voltage, 107% on the power limit. Uh, CPU or GPU core clock is at plus 80 points and the memory clock is at plus 350. Now what that overclock has given us is basically an operating speed of about uh, 21, 2114, which is actually pretty damn nice, uh, especially for these GTX 1080s. This is actually probably the fastest stable GTX 1080 that I have uh, run in the stock that's been given to me. So good job MSI with this Gaming Z graphics card. Here's a quick sound test once again though. Again, everything is under load, everything is overclocked. So here everything is still staying fairly quiet, however we can definitely tell with the additional um, rotational speed of the fans, they are creating a bit more noise. You know it also is making a decent amount of noise as here, I was snoring down there. Jake, don't make fun of me snoring. Looks like my warranty's voided. All right, so everything is installed. Um, there's definitely extra tubing, uh, which I had to sort of route back down under here and around here. And I actually put a, a Velcro piece in there just to sort of hold stuff back in a way for when I put the side panel on. Uh, but other than that, I have powered it on. Everything works and there are no leaks. And I have noticed, however, there is now a significant amount of GPU sag. Like, like check that out. Clearly things are not level, so uh, I actually have an idea. This is something that I've thought of a while back and I've never actually tried, but here goes. I've tied the bit of fishing line to the top of the case. I'm gonna run it down. Right here somewhere.
And there it is, the most ghetto GPU sag mod ever. You don't even notice it, do you? And look, it's not even like completely level. It's mostly level. It looks it looks pretty level as long as you don't like pay attention to the, the fishing line. All right, I've now been running the stress test, the CPU stress test for actually over 20 minutes now, and I kicked in the GPU test just recently as well. Happy to say everything seems to be pretty stable. And even though I have overclocked the GPU just a little bit more, added another uh, 10 points to it, so I'm at plus 90 on the GPU clock offset, plus 350 on the memory, and then I also have manually forced the CPU fan header, since I have that's what I have the EK Predator connected to, to 65% speed. Because what I found was, especially when I was doing just GPU tests, if it's only connected to the uh, CPU header, that the speeds wouldn't improve. So I've actually used, uh, set up speed fan to do that. What that has ended up giving me is uh, GPU frequencies upwards of 2100. Uh, 2165 was a peak that we hit, although 2152 seems a little bit more uh, standard than it's averaging at around 2140, 2139. Uh, 56C was the peak temp on the GPU itself. Um, which is significantly less than the peak temperature when it was air-cooled. Average temp is only about 51 degrees Celsius, which really isn't that much cooler, again, than with the air cooler on there. However, again, we are running at a higher frequency, so that is nice as well. But of course, hopefully also we have less uh, noise being generated with this as well. CPU temps maxed at 76 degrees Celsius on the package, um, which is a little on the warm side, but uh, averages were more around the 60 to 70 C range. And again, that is still with the 4.4 gigahertz overclock, and that is a good uh, 10 to 15 degrees uh, less than what we had with the air cooler, at least if you're looking at average temperatures. So this system was already pretty quiet uh, when I had it air cooled. Can you guys tell the difference now? Of course, now there are also fans up on top. Those are EK Vardar fans. And now with the side panel open just to uh, get the interior noise. That's fairly quiet. All right guys, let's wrap things up here. The EK Predator XLC280 has done a great job for me as far as getting things a little bit cooler, maybe a little bit quieter in the system and also giving me the opportunity to actually install what is effectively a full custom loop without having to um, handle some of the perhaps more difficult aspects of actually installing a full custom loop. Also, it's expandable, which I really like. So on the plus side for this product, we have that it is definitely cheaper than investing in a full custom loop. It uses all standardized EK high quality parts with G1 quarter fittings and of course, it has great performance, at least from what I've seen today. Now, you could, of course, service this loop if you wanted to, and in fact, I even had to. Uh, my initial installation of the GPU block wasn't quite as secure as it could be, and I had to actually remove that and reinstall it. If I had done a full custom loop, removing the GPU and then tightening down the radiator or the block on it or anything like that would be challenging, whereas I was able to just undo the QDCs, pull it out, tighten some stuff down, pop it right back in. Also want to point out it stays nice and quiet thanks to a quiet pump and quiet EK Vardar 140 millimeter fans. Now on the cons side, there's definitely a few things to point out. One is that if you're comparing this to a full custom loop, yeah, it's inexpensive, but you're still going to be spending three to four hundred dollars on uh, the Predator as well as the GPU block add-on with the full everything set up the way you saw me do it today. Going all air cooling is definitely going to be a cheaper solution, um, but that kind of goes without saying when it comes to most water cooling solutions. Also want to point out you need a pretty decent sized case for this setup. Again, I had to swap to this case due to the 68 millimeter thickness for that radiator and pump combo up on top just in order to be able to fit it. Also, when I, once I got all this tubing in here, there is a pretty decent amount of tubing there, so having the extra space to be able to kind of tuck that back away, get it out of sight, or at least not have it just looking like a jumble of cables in there is definitely nice to be able to do. Beyond that, you might notice that I have a pretty decent amount of GPU sag. That is due to the additional weight of the block, the weight of the tubing here, and the fact that some of the rigidity of the board with some of the um, stuff that MSI had put on there to keep it rigid is gone now. I had to remove it to put the black block on. So if that's something that irritates you, and this may be unique to just my situation, you might consider a support for it or something like that. 
And lastly, if you're doing this specifically to get the benefits of a custom loop without having to go through all the installation procedures of a custom loop, you do still have to do some of the more technical type stuff, such as removing the GPU cooler, um, adding thermal paste and thermal pads and everything and getting that all put that back together, which is not a huge deal, but something that some folks might be a little bit more cautious about approaching themselves. Oh, and I should also mention, uh, based on the actual results you saw, the actual performance gains you might get by going from really high-end air cooling to high-end water cooling might be pretty incremental. As you saw, I was only able to get maybe 25 megahertz more out of this GPU with it being stable. Granted, there's other benefits besides just the performance, but if you're doing this expecting to get a huge leap, um, it, it might be minimal. Some closing notes to add would be, this is a 280 millimeter radiator, radiator at the top, handling both the CPU and GPU, which are both pretty high end, and that's a pretty decent amount of heat. I was kind of expecting maybe a little bit lower temperatures here, but I was kind of comparing it to other water cooling setups that have at least two radiators. So whereas 280 millimeter seems to be pretty adequate for this, I would be a little bit more hesitant if you're going with the 240 millimeter EK Predator, for example. You might seriously consider adding another radiator to that, because that will keep the overall temperatures in your loop down, and and probably get you a bit better cooling performance, especially if you're comparing it to the air cooling. Also, you should seriously consider which fan header you plug this into. When I was initially running some tests and I was doing a GPU load with no CPU load, since the CPU temperatures weren't increasing, it wasn't increasing the uh, speed of the pump and the fans at the top of the system, which meant that my GPU was getting much hotter than I'd like it to be. That's why I ended up using speed fan to manually control the speeds of that unit up on top. And then, of course, there was my backplate solution. I decided to reuse the MSI backplate from the Gaming Z because it's nice and has the light up LED logo. That ended up working for me, but your mileage may vary depending on what GPU you actually have and what backplate's on there. Of course, EK makes backplates for these as well that you can buy separately, but uh, then that's an added expense. And that's all for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button and let me know down in the comment section. You can comment on things and argue about whether or not you think this is a good solution for people to use on their computers. And of course, in the description, there are links to these products where they are available for sale as well as my store where you can purchase shirts like this one and mugs and pint glasses to help support my cause. Thank you very much for watching as always and we'll see you in the next video.